let us see animal tissues so plants and animals we know the basic differences the plants they have very less complexity when compared to animals animals are very complex in their organ system and animals perform a lot of things which cannot be performed by plants the way the animals obtain their food the way they get the energy the way they grow the way they reproduce it's all entirely different and very complex when compared to plants so to achieve all these tasks animals they have got very well developed organ systems so all these organ systems are made up of organs and all these organs are made up of tissues so the number of tissues compared to plants in animals we find a variety of tissues which perform variety of functions Say for example, we consider an animal like a man. So he does so many things. He needs energy. That means he needs food. To get his food, he moves from one place to another place. So movement is required. Movement is required. And he gets the food. He has to eat the food. and he should digest the food eating and digestion eating is one activity digestion movement so the digestion is done at one particular place one particular part one particular region of the body but the digested food should be supplied to all parts of the body so transportation is required and inside the cells activity takes place the energy the food is utilized and energy is produced and waste is produced the waste has to be excreted out and for the production of energy oxygen is required so how the oxygen is obtained by breathing again for breathing you have to move your lungs and ribs you have to give some movements in your cavity in your diaphragm so you need some special tissues to achieve all this animals need special tissues to achieve this movement so to make movements to give movements within the body or in body parts or from moving from one place to another place that is to get your food locomotion moving from one place to another place so whatsoever the movement the movement within the body or the movement of organism from one place to another place whatsoever for that movement special tissues are needed here you need muscle and you need eating and digestion you need a separate system organ system digestive system which is made up of stomach intestines liver pancreas all these are made up of different tissues which perform different function so here you need different tissues and even these digestive organs are made up of there should be some kind of movements in the digestion to digest the food so to produce that movements your digestive system also must have a tissue called as muscle muscle tissue and to make a movement to give a movement you not only need muscle you need some other supporting structure framework called bone and for the transportation you need some medium to transport the materials and you need to have blood so see that you are taking oxygen in your lungs and to supply or to transport this oxygen also you need a medium called blood so just here we identified certain tissues the need and necessity of the variety of tissues in our body this is a few example a few of them we have written here not the all this way there are so many kind of activities are required for the animals to carry out their life for their survival not like plants so to do all so they need lot of a variety a wide range of tissues say example we have seen that muscle is required to create movements unless until there is no movement there is no activity in the living organisms for respiration movements are required for digestion movements are required to get the food the animal has to move to protect itself the animal has to move to make the movements the organism requires tissue like muscle and tissue like bone 
and for transportation of materials and the tissue like blood is required. So these are the examples. So let us see, let us see the different kinds of tissues that are present in the animals. Let us begin with the first and foremost important uh, tissue, epithelial tissue, the simplest one. We are beginning with the simplest one, epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue, the first animal tissue which we are discussing here is the epithelial tissue. This is similar to the epidermal cells in plants. There we studied the plants, they have an outer covering called as epidermal cells which protect the inner tissues of the plant from the external environment and from the external foreign bodies that is fungi, bacteria, virus and other kind of things. In the same way, even animals they have got a special covering on their bodies and inside the body and to the inner organs also. Every organ is specially covered and even the total body of an organism is also covered. So we have some kind of lining outside our body and even inside our body. The inner organs are also lined by this epithelial cells. So this forms the epithelial tissue. The main aim or function of this tissue is giving protection that is outside and even inside of our body. See for example, you see just if you open your lip and you see you find some kind of transparent layer inside your lips. Sometimes when you drink any hot tea, coffee or milk, when it is too hot, then you will find you will lose some the layers, the top layers inside your cheek. You find them like a thin paper or thin polythen that is nothing but a layer of epidermal cells. The thin layer, the paper like a polythen like material you find is the epithelial tissue. So this epithelial tissue, mostly it is found in single layered in certain places and some places it is multiple layered that is number of layers but anyway these are the very thin tissues flat cells which are lined which are very closely packed without any intracellular spaces they are very closely packed so the cells are so flat and simple at some places they are single layered and they are very closely arranged there are no intracellular spaces see because of that absence of the intracellular places spaces they act as a barrier. That means they do not allow any materials to go. They have the selective permeability because these are the single layer of cells. The cells are covered by a cell membrane. So we studied the properties of cell membranes. Cell membranes do not allow all the materials to pass through them. They have the permeability, selective permeability. So selectively they are permeable. Another thing, they are they may be one layered or many layered. And they act as a barrier and this they are separated from the underlying tissue by a fibrous basement membrane. So whatever the covering that is in that any of the part, the top layer which is protecting is called as epithelial tissue. The epithelial tissue is separated from the bottom tissue by a basement fibrous membrane. So it is separated. That is the structural features of this epithelial tissue we find. Now let us see what are the different types of epithelial tissue we find. So according to the location, basing on the location, basing on their functioning, this epithelial tissue is classified to squamous epithelial tissue, cuboidal epithelial tissue, columnar epithelial tissue and squamous epithelial tissue sometimes it forms stratified squamous epithelial tissue stratified. So let us see what is this squamous cuboidal columnar. Here they are telling the shape squamous they are flat, cuboidal in the shape of cubes, columnar in the shape of columns, stratified means number of layers. So let us see their structure. And let us know where they are found in our body and what kind of special per functions they are performing. So in this epithelial tissue, the first one which we are going to discuss is squamous epithelial tissue. Squamous, they are the flat cells. Mostly they are single layered. Single layered flat cells without any intracellular gaps. They are closely packed and attached to one another this way. And the main function of this squamous epithelium is protection. They form the lining, lining of many of our body parts. You see the lining of blood vessels. 
So do not get confused that blood vessels are made up of squamous epithelial cells. So the blood vessels are lined by this squamous epithelium. Lung alveoli are lined by this squamous epithelium. So it is. it shows that in these two places you see that lung alveoli. You might be knowing the lung alveoli structure. This is the alveoli. So this alveoli, it gets the oxygen here when we inhale and it is having the lung alveoli, they are having a single layer of cells in which the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. So here the cells are very thin, single layered. So by that, the blood vessels, whatever the blood vessels, they are in contact with this alveoli. So through these blood vessels also the exchange of gases takes place. So there, these, the my, tiny capillaries and the alveoli are very thin, made up of single layer of cells. So that is the lining of this squamous, made up of squamous epithelium. And you see the lining of esophagus. So the esophagus has to be protected, prevented from the friction of various kind of materials we swallow in. So that is lined by the esophagus because we eat different kinds of food with different pH levels. So all this food material should not damage the esophagus and the esophagus is made smooth and easily allowing the substances, the food which we have swallowed to pass through. So that esophagus is lined by this squamous epithelium. The inner lining of our mouth is nothing but the squamous epithelium and the skin that what we have covering our body is also squamous epithelium but the skin is having many layers not single layer. In this case a single layer is required because it facilitates the diffusion of materials in case of alveoli and all. But whereas in case of skin, if only one single layer is covering our inner parts, the single layer may get easily damaged by mechanical uh, any kind of injuries. So we need much more protection. The skin should be thick. So the skin is having so many layers of squamous epithelium. It is called as stratified squamous epithelial tissue stratified layers because our skin must have so many layers our skin is having if the outer skin is having only one or two layers they get easily damaged so by that inner tissues will be inner muscles will be exposed out so for a better protection that is to withstand the tear and wear the skin is having so many layers of squamous epithelium which is called a stratified epithelium so that is the location it is found in the lining of blood vessels thin blood vessels, lung, alveoli, esophagus, mouth, lining of mouth, lining of esophagus and the skin. Now let us see the next one, cuboid epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue, the next epithelial tissue which we are going to discuss is columnar epithelial tissue, columnar. What is the meaning of a column? It is a pillar. So the epithelial tissue that have a structural appearance like pillars which are arranged side by side, you call it as columnar epithelial tissue or columnar epithelium. The main function of this columnar epithelium is absorption and secretion. The different organs that involve in the absorption and secretory functions, there you find this tissue. Basically in the intestine you see that intestinal juices are excreted, secreted. The intestinal juices are secreted for the complete digestion and the digested food is absorbed into the intestine, into the bloodstream. So you find the function of absorption and secretion in the intestines, there you find this columnar epithelium and you also find it in the respiratory tract. The respiratory tract it consists of mucus and the mucus it has to be moved, movement is required. So this, the columnar epithelial tissue which is found in the respiratory tract, it is having cilia, hair-like structures. This cilia helps in the forward movement of mucus. Forward movement of mucus. So as they are having cilia, as it is a columnar epithelial tissue, you are calling it as ciliary columnar 
epithelial tissue. So that is the name given here as they are possessing the cilia in addition to the columnar shape. So the function is absorption and secretion. So the structure is like columns. So columns in the sense they look like a pillar kind of appearance. Now the next one is cuboidal. Cuboidal epithelial tissue, cuboidal. The cells are in the shape of cubes. We call them as cuboidal epithelial tissue. So the location where they are found is that kidney tubules and salivary glands. Basically they involve in the function of secretion. So at the surface as an epithelial cell they involve in the function of secretion. They are found in the kidney tubules and salivary glands. And they also provide mechanical support. This is another function achieved. So these cuboidal epithelial tissues, they are specialized at a specific situation. So as they are secretory in nature, sometimes they get folded inwards. Say for example, if these are the cuboidal cells, So sometimes they get folded inwards like this. They get folded inside and they form a multicellular gland. Multicellular gland, a complete gland is formed by the cuboidal epithelial tissues. A gland is formed which is secretory in function. So sometimes they are specialized. They take this change that is they get folded inwards and they form a multicellular gland even. So that is about the cuboidal epithelial tissue. So we discussed about the epithelial tissue is of different types according to the shape and function it performs. Squamous epithelial tissue and columnar epithelial tissue, cuboidal epithelial tissue. So next we go to that connective tissue. So the connective tissue it helps the organisms in providing strength. It helps the animals in providing strength and it also helps in transport of uh, different materials from one location to another location within the body of an animal. Let us see the features, the structural and functional features of connective tissue. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.